If you are using NADN to build automations, stop. You are too slow and I'm going to prove it to you. I have used NADN for six months and built dozens of automations. And I don't want to brag, but I became pretty good at it. And then I switched to something else. Now, I am not going to tell you what I switched to yet. Because if I tell you the answer right now, you won't understand why it matters. You will think that it's just another tool, but it's not. It's a completely different approach to building. And at the end of this video, you will know exactly what to use instead of NIDN. You will understand why this one approach is the right bet for the coming five years. But first, let me show you what is actually wrong with NIDN. In the next few minutes, I'm going to show you five things. Number one is why NADN is actually a dead end skill. Number two is what the future of automation really looks like. Number three is the exact approach I switched to and why. Number four is cases where you should still use NADN. And yes, there are a few cases when you should just use NADN. And then number five, what this all means for your future. But we need to start with what's wrong. If you think this video is interesting to you and you're enjoying it, please like and subscribe. All my other videos are about how to create the most amazing AI apps possible. So here is what nobody tells you about NADN. You still need a ton of knowledge. And yeah, it is called no code, but actually you are still coding. You need to understand JSONs, APIs, data structure, output formats, and lots more. More. You are indeed not writing code, but you are still thinking like a developer. And here is the thing, when a client sends you a description of their project, they write it in plain English because they are not technical. So for example, they say we need an automation that is connected to WhatsApp, classifies all the messages coming in, and then have an AI agent answer everything, right? So when you're using NADN to solve this problem, you actually become a translator between normal English and NADN. And notes and this exact approach is what I stepped away from but this is not the main reason because it gets worse it's not just about building but it is also about learning how to build and this is exactly where the real problem starts so this was my NNN journey the first time I opened NNN I still needed to figure out everything like what a node was how to actually connect nodes how the complete flow in NNN works and what kind of integrations I could use for my project I came from a coding background. I learned to code in university and then when I switched to NADN, even I just really needed to make a switch in my head and understand how to work with NADN. And it took me a pretty long time to build with NADN what I could also build with custom code. But this took a lot of time. And if you are not a coder yourself, it will probably take even longer. Okay, we'll get to that. But for now, I think you understand that there is a learning curve. And while you're spending months learning NADN, probably within a few years you won't even need to use NADN anymore. Don't get me wrong it is good to have a specific set of knowledge that you can use for everything like the core understanding of how tech works but with what I currently use that is not even necessary. The only skill that you now need to have is explaining what you want. Give a lot of detail and have in your head exactly what you want to create. It is not about output formats, APIs and all this technical stuff. It is about the vision. To be honest you you can already describe what you want. I mean, your non-technical client can already explain what they need. So I'm 100% sure that you can do that as well. You're basically choosing between learning this new skill or leveraging this already existing skill. And this one will probably not even be relevant in a few years well, this one will be relevant for the rest of your life. But before I show you exactly what I'm talking about, you need to understand something about the future because AI is improving fast. Every few months, a new model comes out and drastically improves everything that we can do with AI. It's smarter, faster, and better at understanding what you actually want. And the exact approach that I'm talking about this whole video is using AI. We need to leverage the power behind all the AI models that we're using on a daily basis. Because when Claude or ChatGPT or Gemini gets better, my builds and everything that I'm creating also gets better. And the best thing is, I don't even need to do a lot about it. In Silicon Valley, they are working on better models and I'm just leveraging everything that they bring out. So this means that my skill of actually describing what I want compounds over time with AI models becoming better and better. 
but NADN will stay NADN, right? It will still be nodes connecting to each other where you need to manually connect everything. And one important thing that you don't need to forget is NADN is still the background, right? We are connecting those nodes, but our clients, they don't even see it. Where with our approach, we can basically do everything in one, but it will very much stay the same. And this also means that your skill that you have been training for so much also doesn't get better. So how you should see this is your NNN skill in 2027 will probably still be your same NNN skill, where your AI building skill will probably be 10x from what it is today. You might be wondering, then what are you using? What is so much better than NNN? Let me show you. So six months ago, I switched to using AI builders, like Lovable, for example. And wait, before you think, oh, another AI tool. Let me explain you why this is fundamentally different. Because what I'm about to show you will change how you think about building AI. This is the exact same workflow with the same requirements, but two completely different approaches. So let's say we need to create a WhatsApp automation app. So a WhatsApp message comes in, we classify what kind of message it is, which team member needs to answer the question, and everything is visualized in a dashboard. We have two approaches to doing this. So we could either create this whole flow in NNN, then connect all of our endpoints and then use another tool, for example, Lovable, to create a front end. So you're now using two different systems to create one app. With an AI builder like Lovable or Google AI Studios or Replit, we can just have this project description, put it directly into Lovable and get the exact same result, but then in one app without dragging and dropping around, without actually understanding everything about the underneath technology, we are really leveraging the power of AI to create our system. And I do rather be early than late. Now, look, I'm not telling you to never use NNN. There are still some cases where you could just use NNN. And if you are very good at NNN, don't throw it away directly because you already have this skill, right? If you're creating purely backend automations, you can still use NNN. Why not? It works fine. So this is my take on NNN and Lovable. If you agree with my take on NNN and Lovable, please make sure to like and subscribe on my channel. And then I will see you in the next video.